cardiovascular disease mortality is on the rise in younger women. And when you look at rates of change, the fastest growing heart disease death rate is in middle-aged women, age 45 to 64. So this is a particular group that needs more focused attention. So we really need to double down on our preventive efforts. And it's really disheartening to see that we're no longer making the progress that we used to. So if these trends are not overturned, you know, heart disease is set to overtake cancer as the leading cause of death in younger women as well. I'm really glad you made that point because when you look at what these things called in our practice, we have these things called death bars, which is just an analysis that shows mortality sliced and diced in different ways. But you know, sometimes a graph just says things in a way that it's harder to describe in words. And one of the things that does emerge from this analysis is that in middle age, cancer is still the biggest killer. And of course, overall, cardiovascular disease is, and in old age, cardiovascular disease and neurodegenerative disease dominate. But what you said is very distressing if indeed now cardiovascular disease would eclipse cancer in even middle age. So overall, I'm focused on women's health. So cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in women. You know, women more often fear breast cancer, which is a terrible disease. My mother had breast cancer, but far more women are likely to die of cardiovascular disease than cancer. But notably, you know, in younger individuals under the age of 65, cancer is still the leading cause of death in women. But one of my studies that we published in the European Heart Journal, we tracked death rates in younger women under the age of 65 in the US, looking at CDC wonder data over a 20 year period from 1999 to 2019. And we showed during this time that actually cancer mortality has been declining in younger women, which is a good thing. But since 2010, heart disease mortality is no longer declining and it's actually rising in these younger women at 0.5% per year. So it's actually narrowing the gap between cancer deaths and heart disease deaths in the younger female population as well. So if these trends are not overturned, as I mentioned, you know, heart disease is set to overtake cancer as the leading cause of death in younger women which is really discouraging considering that we have so many more tools now for prevention. And what was also really disheartening, I don't know if you saw this American Heart Association survey that was published in 2021, but the American Heart Association has sent out surveys over the years to women about their awareness of heart disease being the leading cause of death in women. And back in 2009, you know, 65% of women reported that they knew that heart disease was the leading cause of death. But in 2019, the more recent data, 10 years later, only 44% of women reported that heart disease was the leading cause of death in women. They were more likely to report cancer as a leading cause of death. So this lack of awareness is worrisome, and it was particularly prominent among um, non-Hispanic Black women and among Hispanic women, and also among the younger women demographic that we're talking about who arguably we can do the most for primordial prevention would be most effective if started earlier. I also think there's kind of an emotional thing to this, which is even if you don't pose the question directly like a multiple choice question, I just find in speaking with my female patients, so young female patients, I think there's a greater fear of breast cancer than ASCVD, even though the mortality from heart disease is somewhere between eight and 10 times greater than that of breast cancer. It's amazing to think that they would be more afraid of something that has a log lower difference in mortality. What do you think explains that? And again, you can answer this both through a personal lens, through the experience with your mother, but also professionally given what you study. You know, I think there's still this lingering notion that somehow heart disease is a man's disease. The problem is, is women have historically been under-enrolled in randomized clinical trials. So we previously had limited data on efficacy and safety of therapies in women. So both women think that they're at lower risk than they really are, but also clinicians. So clinicians, even when given the same 10-year estimated risk or burden of risk factors, clinicians are more likely to perceive women to being at lower risk, and this leads to under-treatment. And particularly, you know, I see this with women who have FH, familial hypercholesterolemia, who are under-treated. Because on average, 
in the non-FH population, women tend to develop cardiovascular disease about 10 years later than men. Somehow thought that premenopausal women of reproductive years are somehow protected. But we don't see this in FH. FH affects one in 250 individuals. It's autosomal dominant, which means women are equally affected as men. And it's associated with a 20-fold increased risk of CVD. Women with FH have an earlier onset of ASCVD about 20 to 30 years earlier than women without FH. And they continue to be undertreated, but notably in the FH population, women have the same age, early age of onset as CVD as men do. So they are not protected. They don't have this premenopausal advantage. And it's still really disheartening to me to see that these women who have very high genetic risk are um, not being treated because of concerns about pregnancy, which you can talk about our management around there. But it's better to even have short interruptions in treatment than to let these women who have genetically high, very high LDLs be marinating in this atherogenesis for decades and decades untreated, which you know dooms them to earlier onset morbidity and mortality if not treated. Let's put some of these numbers to folks. I don't know if these are still the correct data, but the last time I looked, this was sort of a directionally correct. We use 65 as the dividing line between quote unquote young and old. And the data basically suggested that if you consider all the people who are going to suffer a major adverse cardiac event in their life, and you consider men and ask the question, what fraction of men will experience their first event? Of the men who experience a major adverse cardiac event in life, what fraction will experience it before the age of 65? The answer was fully half. Again, this is to dispel the notion that cardiovascular disease is an old person disease, because I don't think most people would consider someone who's 60 years old to be old by today's standards. And even in women, to your point, who have this time shift of about one decade, still one third of women who will experience a major adverse, adverse cardiac event in their life will do so before the age of 65. Those were the data about five or six years ago. Do you believe that that is still the case? Yes, unfortunately. You know, women of reproductive age are still at risk for ASCVD. They may be lower risk on average, but they're still at risk and they're less likely to be treated. You know, when you look at the data from like the young MI, young myocardial infarction cohort before the onset of their myocardial infarction, you know, women were less likely to have been treated and perceived to be at lower risk. So this is really concerning about the undertreatment of women and, and this presumption that they're lower risk. We know that smoking and diabetes, in addition to the FH, as I mentioned, also eliminate any premenopausal advantage. It's not only really the magnitude of LDL elevation, but it's the duration of exposure. So even exposure to mild or moderately elevated LDL for a sufficient number of years does increase the risk of ASCVD to an earlier onset compared to individuals who have had lifetime low LDL. And so by waiting to treat individuals until later of life, you know, you've left atherogenesis, you know, atherosclerosis propagate unchecked during this time. It's never too late to implement prevention, but prevention is better implemented when started earlier. 